I'm Ben Stein, and today I'm going to make history. I'm putting up $5,000 that says I know more than you. So if you're smart enough, fast enough, and if you've got the guts, you can win Ben Stein's money. So these neo-Nazis in Germany uh, go down to Brazil and they find Hitler is alive and they go to him and say, my Fuhrer, you must come back and save Germany. Everything depends on you. And he says, forget it, I'm not doing it. Forget it, I'm old, I'm sick of it, I'm not doing it. And they say, please, my Fuhrer, you've got to come back. The nation is becoming polluted and ruined and we, everything depends on you. He says, forget it, I just told you I'm not doing it. They say, please, the entire German Reich is going to vanish and disappear if you don't come back and save us. And he says, all right, I'll do it. I'll come back. But this time, no more Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> and somehow I think of that today as I play these people, because today I'm going to put $5,000 in my mouth and give these three troublemakers a chance, comedians, and you can tell by looking at them, to win it all away from me if they're smart enough, quick enough, and funny enough. Now, why have I done this? Call me crazy. You're crazy! But also, yes, maybe, but also call me fairly sure that they don't have a chance against me. And now let's turn to the almond joy, to my mounds, Jimmy Kimmel, and find out something funny about these people. All right. <laughs> you, you busted the Norm Crosby joke book out, huh? I see for this show. <laughs> all right. We have comedians here today, but not just comedians. Uh, these comedians were all once teachers, actual teachers of, of children in America, and, uh, well, they followed in Gabe Kaplan's footsteps. And our first uh, contestant is Kathy Ladman. And, Kathy, you were an eighth-grade teacher where? Eighth-grade English in Abington, Pennsylvania, which is outside of Philadelphia. And I, I have to tell you, you're very funny on the show. I've been watching on the oh, show. Oh, thank you. Really on this show? Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Well, I wonder what compliments Dom has in store. Dom Herrera is here. Dom, you taught in Philadelphia, actually, not I, in the I outskirts. I taught fourth grade. I was Mr. Ira. Hey, Mr. <laughs> By the way, it's great to open up with a good Hitler joke. I don't think, any, anything, I don't think anything brings people together more than a good Hitler joke. Oh, yeah. And that, that Himmel, he was something else, too. And what about, about Goebbels? Yeah. And what about, what, what joke book did you say I came from? I didn't know I came Norm from a joke book. No, I was just kidding oh, you. Okay. Then. Yeah. No, it's, that was a joke, you see. You taught at the Catholic school? I taught fourth grade, so I don't expect much. I'm actually a, com I'm actually a comedian savant. I'm a, I'm a terrific stand-up comedian, but I know almost nothing. Really? Well, 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 uh, maybe you can teach us the color or something a little later. Ooh, at Laura House, you taught seventh and eighth grade in uh, Texas? Yeah, in Austin, Texas, Bailey Middle School. Go Bears! Yeah, yeah we got the... Yeah. Oh, sure. We love the Bears! Got a couple hundred of them here. And what was your subject there? Uh, I taught um, English, and I taught Texas history, so there was a lot of... Oh, um, really? Yeah, there was a lot of kids going, do we need to know this in All Texas right. history? And a lot of me going... Nah. <laughs> well, you know, you can't do that in Maryland history, in Las Vegas history, in everybody's history. All right, contestants, good luck. You're going to need it. Everyone, please turn your attention to our game board as Jimmy tells us our first five topics. And they are places north of the border where you get the 600 mile runs. <laughs> the Lung and the Restless. <laughs> Don't mock me. Come over there and lower the sonic boom. <laughs> the guy is an angel, but he has halotosis. <laughs> Her smile is fake, but her rack is real. <laughs> All right, now, contestants, in the first round, questions are worth anywhere from $50 to $150 of my money. We're going to start with you, Kathy. Please pick a topic. Well, I think, uh, obviously, I'll have to start with her smile is fake, but her rack is real. $100 question. Subject to a vote of conference of the Knesset, the Israeli cabinet is selected by what man? Dom? Who is the prime minister? <laughs> <laughs> Committed the uh, the worst sin you could possibly commit. Do you on want this to show? try it again? You are awfully close to the right yeah. answer. Yeah. The prime minister. Yes. Very yeah. Good, very good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that means Don, you get first crack at a follow up, but you do have to wear that <laughs> at the end of this round. Not the on your head necessarily, yeah. though. Not on your head. That's right. Okay. Wherever. Okay. That's right. Fifty dollar question. After Israel became a state, the Knesset opened for the first time in what city? 
You're asking me? Yeah, you're oh, asking me. <laughs> Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Yes, very, go. good, very good. Very good. You're asking me? I thought I was in Minnesota. Excuse me. We're opening one in Minneapolis, too, I understand. Yeah, exactly. That's the mall there. Our next yeah, category <laughs> is the rookie's wife got a restraining order to keep him 60 feet from the mound. And Dom, you get to pick. Uh, I'll take that one. All right. Okay. $150 question. In 1968, what former Cincinnati Reds player was the first catcher to ever win the National League Rookie of the Year award? <phone rings> Kathy? Johnny Bench. Yes, hey. very good. There you go. Very good. Okay, $50 follow-up. What electrical device is also a slang term for the pitcher and catcher combination? Switch. Dom or Laura? Electrical device is also a slang term for the pitcher. You, you're supposed to ring the bell if you think oh. you know the answer. Keep mumbling. <laughs> okay, no, neither of you got it. Okay, it's a battery. And the now... Battery. Yeah. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> now, before I lose any more cash, it's time to take a break. We'll be back to see how much more money these comedians can take away from me right after this. <laughs> Ben Stein's money. Right now, Kathy and Dom are in the lead with $150 of my money. Jimmy, what's our new category? It is the Slash Action Hero. And uh, <laughs> Kathy had the last correct answer, so you get to pick first. Places north of the border where you get the 600-mile runs. $50 question. Name the huge fracture of the earth located in California that runs more than 600 miles. <laughs> Kathy. San Andreas Fall. Very good, Kathy. Very good. $50 follow-up, $50 follow-up, Kathy. What is the Japanese term for a seismic sea wave which often strikes coastal areas after an underwater earthquake? A tsunami. Very good, Kathy. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Our next category. Teacher, I crop my pants. <laughs> That's good for this show. Kathy, you get to pick me up. I have no idea what that means. Um, mm -hmm. I have the, the lung and the restless. Like, you know what that means? Hundred dollar question. What is the name of the main muscle used to draw air into your lungs? Laura. Esophagus? No, I'm sorry. Oh, I want to say something. Dom. <laughs> Pulmonary? No, I'm sorry. It is the thoracic abdominal diaphragm. Oh, I had right. that on the tip of my okay, tongue. Okay, but here's a $50 toss-up because none of you got that. Oh. What is the name of the medical apparatus that pumps air in and out of the lungs to compensate for the loss of natural breathing? Laura? Iron lung? Correct, and we would have also accepted respirator, ventilator, right. and inhalator. Laura, you're on the board. Our next category is... The poet went to the bar looking for a 10, but he met a 4. Or you get to pick. I will take that one. $150 question. What 8th century epic poem uses the phrase Wales Road as a metaphor for the sea? <laughs> Kathy. Oh. Um. That's right. That's it. Oh. Yeah. oh. No, <laughs> that's a chant. Yes, Dom. The old man in the sea? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Laura. Chaucer? No, well, well, I'm sorry, something. sorry, it's, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. sorry, it's Beowulf, Beowulf, <laughs> Beowulf. I just read that Fi yesterday. Fifty dollars, all right, stop showing up. Fifty dollar toss up. In the epic poem, what is the name of the monster slain by Beowulf? Laura. Grendel? Yes, very good. Yeah. Now, let's try another oh, question. Okay, Our next category is... At the Southern birthday party, they served a white sheet cake. <laughs> and Lori, you get to pick again. The guy's an angel, but he has halotosis. $50 question. What 1980s TV show featured an angel named Jonathan Smith who was sent back to Earth to help people? <laughs> Laura. Making it? No. Well. <laughs> that was a good one, though, huh? <laughs> it was called Highway to Heaven. Oh, $50 yeah. toss-up. Oh. oh. My goodness gracious, oh. what a pathetic round of questioning. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the first round. Kathy, oh. you are in the lead with 250 of Ben's dollars. You're moving on. Dom moving on, too. He's got $150, and 
Well, Laura, you're uh, one Michael Landon short, I'm afraid. Well, Laura, you were coming on strong. You would Very undoubtedly strong. have won if we had just gone on for another she few minutes. But since you, she did have some great <laughs> answers. Well, Shut up, Kathy. Anyway, she'll be compensated in heaven. $100, I'm afraid it goes back up to the board. I'll just toss it up very quickly and say goodbye to you, Laura. Goodbye. And when we come back, these two comedians are going to try to get deeper into my wallet. Stay tuned. You might learn something. Kathy has $250. Then you got quite a basket on you, might I say. Whoa! I know, I know, I know. I, I know. That's why I say I wish I was thin as you. That's okay. Yeah. Don has $150 of my money, and I have $4,600 from any of my original $5,000 stake, which I'll once again defend by becoming a common condensate. All right. At this point forward, Ben has no advanced knowledge of any of the questions I'll be asked. Is that right, Ben? Well, I'm sorry to say that's very true. Yes, and whoever has the highest score at the end of this round, whether it's Dom or Kathy, two former teachers from the state of Pennsylvania who abandoned the youth of America to go <laughs> amuse drunks in comedy clubs <laughs> don't want to play against Ben oh, one-on-one -on -one right. for $5,000. Right. Let's have a look at the topics. Right, they yeah. are 1,000-foot liners not protecting a sumo wrestler's BVDs. <laughs> the only time you'll hear the words Englishman and son used in the same sentence. The Italian guy sneezed and covered me with his sonata. <laughs> It's a thin line between love and Haiti. <laughs> and will a catheter hurt if you stick it in my Virginia? <laughs> Ben's money, so, uh, you know, Ben gets to go first. I'll try. The only time you'll hear the words Englishman and son used in the same sentence. All right, for $300, who wrote the song containing the line, Mad Dogs and Englishmen Go Out in the Midday Sun? Tom? Joe Cocker? No. Ben? Kipling? No. <laughs> Noel Coward. Oh, Joe Cocker. Joe Cocker, too. No, he wrote songs. Oh, 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 next category oh, is, is big wooden things that don't want to be president. <laughs> ben? I'll try big wooden things that don't want to be president. For $200, also called a chiffre robe in the southern United States, what is the French name for a large, often ornate wardrobe cabinet? <laughs> Kathy? Armoire. That's right, Kathy. Very good. <laughs> All right. Next category. I had to sleep with the hard-boiled detective, but it was over easy. <laughs> and, uh, Kathy, you get the pick. The Italian guy sneezed and covered me with his sonata. All right. For $200, <laughs> sonatas, such as the famed Autumn and Moonlight sonatas, are most commonly composed for what instrument? Ben? Piano. That is correct, yes. <laughs> New category. Nothing comes between me and my Calvinism. <laughs> ben? I'll try. Nothing comes between me and my Calvinism. For $300, what Swiss city was the center of Reformed Protestantism under John Calvin? Ben? Geneva. That's right, Ben, yeah. You're yeah. yeah. smart. That's why we have him here. He's real smart. Our next category is Germanic Depression. <laughs> and you again, Ben. I'll try Germanic Depression. All right, for $500 Ooh. of Ben's dollars, what pessimistic German dramatist wrote the play Mother Courage and Her Children? Kathy? Chekhov. Oh. oh. Ben? Brecht. Brecht is ah. right, yeah. 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 Brecht. <laughs> Chekhov's the guy from Star Trek. Oh. Oh, I know, you're right. <laughs> All right, next category is You Make Me Feel Brand New. And uh, Ben picks again. Hmm, I'll try. I had to sleep with the hardball detective, but it was over easy. For $300, what 1940s oh. movie siren, known for her peekaboo hairstyle, starred in the hardboiled detective thriller This Gun for Hire? <laughs> Kathy? Veronica Lake. That's very good, oh. yeah. Oh. That's a minute left in the round. Uh -huh. Our next category. <laughs> <laughs> Physician Helium Thyself. And, uh, Kathy, you get the pick. You make me feel brand new. All right, mm. for $400, what part of cereal grains is brand made from? Ben? The husk. The husk, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that sound uh, means this round is over. Uh, Kathy, you are moving on. You've got $750. Uh, 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 
I've never heard Dom so quiet for a... <laughs> Dom, you've been a worthy competitor, and you're a very, very funny, talented guy Thank with you. a huge, huge career in every direction. And I've reached my level of incompetence. No, 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 only on this show, but you're an incredibly funny, talented guy, and I bow to your incredible humor. Right back at you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm afraid, however, this $150 you thought you had won now goes hurtling over my shoulder. Oh, there it goes. Now we've reached the financial final financial crush. You, Kathy, maybe within mere moments of winning all $5,000 of my money, if you're lucky enough, quick enough, and funny enough, stay in your seats. It could get ugly. Now we'll see if Kathy can win $5,000 of Ben Stein's money. Kathy, you've done very well so far against dogged opposition. You've won $750 of my money, and that is yours to keep no matter what happens. But okay. now you, you have a chance, albeit a small one, to walk out of here with all $5,000 of my money for Jimmy and Gabriel and Georgia's You have to wheel this out every day, huh? Oh, yeah. And all you have to do is beat me in what we call the best of 10 tests of knowledge, Kathy, and Jimmy is going to explain it to you right now. Yes, Sticky Buns, I will. I'm going to ask Ben and Kathy the same 10 questions. If you can answer more of those than Ben, if he, if he comes back, you win his $5,000. You want to go first or second? I'm going to go second. You're going to go second? Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good policy. Right. But all right, okay, all right. Uh-oh. Nicholson behind you. Hey, now, calm down with that, will you? All right, we'll step all into right. the booth. Yeah. See ya. Exactly. Ben, you're going first here. What the? Hey, You've got the help. comic fan. Uh, yeah, sometimes I'm they're up very on smart. Dog's lap. It's not called Kathy Labman's money. You're not. Your pressure's <laughs> on you. Well, you know what? Even if I lose, it's still called Win Ben Stein. All right. All right. Ben Stein. Dom Barrera, Laura House. Thank you, guys. We have to clean them out of that booth almost every night. It's crazy. I don't know what goes on. All right, Ben, you know how this works. You have 60 seconds. Kathy is in the soundproof isolation booth. I do my best, booth. but somehow they put my microphone in here wrong. It's a trifle uncomfortable. Ben wears a <laughs> microphone. It's, 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 it's very, it's, it it's cutting well. edge. Works yes. Well. All right, Ben, 60 seconds, 10 questions. Are you ready? I shall do my best. Let's begin. What country's flag features a white cross floating in the center of a red background? Uh, Sweden. No, what is the name of the tall, pointy headdress sometimes worn by the Pope? Oh, God, I don't know. Who wrote the novel Sometimes a Great Notion? Jones. No, what former Olympic boxing champ lit the torch to open the 1996 Games in Atlanta? Cassius Clay. Yes, built in 1815, the USS Fulton was the first warship to use what type of power? Steam power. Yes, uh, Gaia is considered the goddess of what planet? Mars. No, in 1998, what organization declared Citizen Kane the best American movie of all time? The, uh, crit, the hundred crit, no, no, I don't know. I know. What Chinese leader referred to the atom bomb as a paper tiger in Mao. 1940? Mao Zedong. Yes, at what course of a meal would the Italian cassata traditionally be served? Dessert. Yes, what U.S. government agency is abbreviated NLRB? National Labor Relations Board. That is right, you got five, uh, you missed a, uh, the American Film Institute. Gaia is the goddess of Earth. Ken Kesey wrote sometimes a great notion. The Pope wears a mitre, and uh, Switzerland is the oh, white good, cross with good. the red background. All right. Hey, Kathy. You can take those off. All right, Ben only got five. That's that's a rarity. Oh, all right. All right. Are you ready, Kathy? Mm -hmm. You got to beat five. You got 60 seconds to do it. Ten questions. Let's begin. What country's flag features a white cross floating in the center of a red background? Don't know. What oh, is... I know. Uh, it's Switzerland. Yes. What is the name of the tall, pointy headdress sometimes worn by the Pope? A mitre. Yes. Who wrote the novel Sometimes a Great Notion? Uh, Thackeray? No. What former Olympic boxing champ lit the torch to open the 1996 Games in Atlanta? Muhammad Ali. Yes. Built in 1815, the USS Fulton was the first warship to use what type of power? Uh, don't know. Gaia is considered the goddess of what planet? Don't know. In 1998, what organization declared Citizen Kane the best American movie of all time? Uh, American Film Institute. Yes. What Chinese leader referred to the atom bomb as a paper tiger in 1946? Mao Zedong. That's right. <laughs> At what course of a meal would the Italian cassata traditionally be served? Uh... Uh, don't know. What U.S. government agency is abbreviated NLRB? National Labor Relations Board. Well, 
Well, she started it, and you got it there, guys. Three more people, I hope nowhere near as far as Kathy, give, get a chance to win Ben, ben Stein's ben. money. I was flipping through the channels and I saw him. He got that divorce from Who's a Masquash. I know exactly who you're talking about, but he never married Who's a Masquash. Sure he did. Honey, what's the, the name of that movie with the mother-in-law, somebody and something? Da, 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 da. If you know the name. Who is that? William Shatner. Correct. We've got your game. Starface, hosted by Danny Bonaducci, premieres August 1st at 9.30 on GSN. Yes, Sam.